Hello guys, my name is Vijay Kumar Vaka. I am working as Senior Solution Consultant in Episero. Today in this session, let us discuss about message logging policy in Mule 4. I have created uh, this simple RAML where we have uh, two API endpoints. One is slash movies, the other is slash movies slash book. So uh, let us discuss about this particular endpoint because I'm going to use this endpoint uh, to show uh, message logging policy. So this is the data type which I have defined. It's a very simple one where we have a key value pair. The key is named as number of tickets and the expected data type for that particular key is number. So this is regarding RAML. Now I have imported uh, this. Uh, I have created a, an application using the same uh, RAML. So you could see post slash movie slash book. So this is the sample implementation that I have done for uh, this particular endpoint named uh, movie slash book. So we are provisioning the user to book, book the tickets and this is the sample uh, response or the implementation. So what we are doing here, uh, this is where I'm capturing the number of tickets and I'm simply responding uh, with some static value uh, appending to the number of tickets. Like, let's say if they are sending, if the user is sending 10, uh, 10 tickets, okay, so we'll respond with 10 tickets for booked as requested. You can see the sample response here, okay. Now, this is the API, and this I have uh, already deployed to the runtime manager. You could see here, and if you go to the, uh, so this is deployed already, and if you uh, go to the API manager, right? I have already created an API for the same uh, RAML. So this will, so once you create a, an entry or an API in the API manager, then you can apply the policies uh, on that API. So if I click on this, right? Uh, now you'll be able to apply some policies. So if you go to apply policies, for now we don't have any policies. Now, Let's try to apply message logging policy. Click on add policy. Now choose this uh, message logging. This is under troubleshooting. We have almost like 19 to 20 uh, policies. So they were categorized and if you click on troubleshooting as well, uh, it will be filtered and you can choose this message logging. So once you choose that, click on next. So let's see this configuration. Um, okay, so here we can have multiple configurations. You could see add button here. So why we have that, uh, we'll see. Now let's go through about the uh, default or the, the first configuration. So what I'm going to name it with info log level configuration. You can also leave it as is. Now uh, configuration data. So if you see about this, right, data view expression for extracting information for the message to log. For example, uh, so why we use this policy? Like in real time, you will be having, um, what do you say, JSON logger framework or custom logging framework, right? So it's fine. But um, what if, if you require, uh, if you require to know uh, what is coming to your API and what is, uh, being uh, sent as a response from your API, right? So in, in API led connectivity mainly, I forgot to show you the images. Uh, so let's say in API led architecture, right? Uh, this is how it, it will look like. So the sender will send a request to experience API. This is not the case always, but I have just uh, given a scenario where we have experience API process API and system API. Now if sender is sending the request, right? Uh, 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 we'll we'll send the same request or we'll do enrichment in the meantime uh, in process API or in system API and we'll I mean the request and response pattern will flow among the API led connectivity in this way. This is one of the scenarios, but this this need not be the uh, scenario always in API led connectivity. So now what if if your requirement is to uh, see or log uh, in the logs right like what is the request that you are receiving and what is the response uh, you are going to send from a particular api so in order to check that right we can apply this particular policy that is a message logging policy so 
uh, this is where so you can apply on experience api or process api or system api any of the apis so that's why i have highlighted here so what we can do we can we can log the request that is coming into the api and we can log the response that is going out of the api that is the reason you could see these options right before calling api and after calling api so let me check this one as well now we can basically log the request and response uh, that is uh, coming into the api and going out of the api so we can apply uh, this message logging policy in uh, uh, on experience api or process api or system api just to understand how the request is coming into the system api and how the response is uh, going out of system api to process api or if this is not there how the request is coming from experience api to system api and how the response is going uh, from system api to experience api these things we can understand by using this policy if not you need to have uh, loggers explicitly not only uh, the request we can also log uh, uh, headers or uh, attributes uh, we can log some part of uh, payload as well like it's very flexible you can pass that particular uh, data view expression from this particular uh, option so let me first of all try to log the payload and we'll see how how it prints in the logs okay so let me click on apply now what happens once the policy is applied right uh, you'll see a message here saying that uh, the policy is applied let's wait for that particular log in the con in the logs and we'll see the we'll send a request from postman Uh, looks like it is taking a little bit of time yeah applied policy uh, the policy name okay so it has applied this policy now let's try to uh, send this request so i forgot to tell you that if you if you have already observed right there is no logger here right there is no logger here now because we have applied that message logging policy what happens uh, this particular payload whatever we are sending to this uh, uh, api will be logged so as per the settings right if you see uh, we have uh, we have ticked this before calling api and after calling api checkboxes so it should log uh, the, the incoming payload and the outgoing payload from that api so let's try to send this request now let me send this request so we this is the input payload and this is the response response payload right now if you see in the uh, console or in the logs right you could see uh, info with info and info because here if you see the log level itself is info okay uh, though we uh, we did not had this uh, logger in the implementation still it is printing just because of this particular uh, message logging policy okay now let me try one more time uh, yeah you could see that you could see the same here right so this is before calling the api and this is after calling the api the same thing has happened here okay now what i will do um i mean if you want if you don't want after calling the api you can uncheck this so uh, it it's all, it is all about your requirement basically okay now for example um, let's do one thing that uh, what if if i have to log the messages only if the number of requests are more than 10 or if the number of tickets that the user is going to request are more than 10 for example so if if your requirement is uh, like that right what we can do we can have a data view expression like this so so i am actually evaluating on the payload itself on the contents of the payload so the key is number of tickets so payload dot number of tickets greater than 10 so what happens right only if the number of tickets are greater than 10 then it is going to uh, log the messages in the logs of cloud hub so let me save this because i have modified right so i need to save that particular uh, policy now again uh, we'll have to wait for some time 
because these changes have to be applied uh, right so it will take some time now what happens even if i send this particular uh, request with number of tickets as 10 it won't get logged because we have added a condition uh, in the policy now you see uh, it got uh, reflected now let me try to send the same request so if i send this request right i should not i should not be seeing any logs um, okay i got the point why it resulted into an error um, i'll tell you so um nothing uh, i can explain you now itself what what's happening you know this particular condition is being applied will be applied basically uh, before calling the api and after calling the api now what is the response that we are getting from the api that is this string value 10 tickets were booked as requested but if i but there is no number of tickets key right in the response that is why it is failing okay so uh, that is the reason i had this particular uh, uh, dw script here uh, you will see the same thing uh, that is the reason uh, basically why we got this error okay so now what i can do uh, i'll uncheck this and uh, let me save it so the point here to be noted is that whatever the condition you are going to have right uh, this should be a common condition uh, i mean this will be applied as a, a common condition for uh, whatever the checks you are going to have here so if you have a condition uh, that means it is applicable for the uh, uh, i mean before calling api and after calling api if you are going to check both the things so if you don't want it to be applied to uh, both the things, then you can uncheck one of them, okay? So that is the uh, catch here. You, uh, this, will be, uh, this will be applicable for both the things before calling API and after calling the API. Now this will be applied. Yeah, it got applied. Now let me send this request. If I send this request, right, uh, this will not be logged, right? I have already sent and I got the response but it did not log in the console, in the logs. Let me try one more time. No, because here the condition is, uh, if the number of tickets are greater than 10 only, we have to log. Now let me uh, change it to 11, send the request. Now this will be logged because we have only checked before, the, before calling the API. After calling API, we got an issue because of this condition. See, it has only logged uh, the input payload or the input, yeah, the input request that is coming into this particular API because of this particular checkbox we have checked. We did not check this, so we did not have the corresponding uh, response uh, that is being shown in the logs. So this is what, so we, we have discussed uh, about this particular option. You can also pass headers or uh, query parameters or URA parameters, uh, they have given some example here, right? So you can pass it like that, and whatever you would you would like to print in the cons in the logs, uh, accordingly you can have a data view expression here, and also this is the condition uh, that that you can impose on the logs, or you can apply to the logs, uh, basically to filter the uh, messages that you would like to log. So this is the advantage that you are going to get uh, with this policy. And uh, we, you can also, uh, if you click on add, right, we can also apply uh, one more configuration like debug log level, let's say. Now, uh, you can change this to debug. And um, I think you see these two are required. Uh, this is required. If, if you don't configure this and if you try to save it, it will throw an error. So this is required. Now what we can do, uh, let's try to apply the same thing here as well. And uh, yeah, before calling API and after calling API. Now this is a debug thing. Uh, so in order to see the debug, right, uh, debug logs, right, what we have to do, we also have to um, pass this particular package name in the runtime manager, I'll show you. Now, first of all, let me save it. Uh, 
so till now we have only info level uh, logs we can see now uh, if i want to see something like uh, okay let me uh, show you this one payload dot uh, number of tickets okay let me keep it uh, as payload only and let me save this so now we have both the things one is info log level configuration the other is debug log level configuration but in order to see the debug log level configuration we need to apply uh, this particular uh, log level and the corresponding package name on the runtime manager of that application here we don't have anything right now if you go to logs this uh, this change ha uh, should reflect so let's wait for that particular uh, um, message in the logs and we'll see so we have changed the policy we have also added a debug log level in uh, configuration in the same policy yeah it got applied now let me send this request see you are able to still only see the info level logs though we have uh, added one more uh, log level configuration we could only see the info level log so what we have to do now go to logging and just apply this one like change this to a debug and uh, add this uh, package name here so that now we will be able to see both uh, uh, info and uh, debug uh, level logs in the logs section of this api if you see this uh, these changes are already applied okay now go to logs and let me try to send the request now it is 1715 let me send the request see if you see right uh, i have sent the request now you see this is the input also you could see uh, extra info here so this is because of that uh, uh, debug right so this is debug level logging and info is only for uh, uh, before calling the api and debug as per the configuration we we have configured before calling the api and after calling the api that is why you could see a debug uh, uh, he i mean at the end of the api and also uh, at the beginning of that uh, before calling the api as well okay so i hope uh, you understood something this is the main advantage that you can pass anything you would you would like to uh, print in the console uh, with with your data view expression and also you can configure different different levels of uh, logs like error and uh, debug warn and info okay so i i, I think uh, you have learned something out of this uh, thank you so much for listening to my video thank you